This is the second of three videos where we're building this patch together. In this video, we'll build the base. We're using some of the modules that we set up last time, so check out that video if you're interested. There are links in the description to both that video and the complete patch, which you can download for totally free. This bass consists of two layered voices and sounds like this. It's made using a square wave and a triangle wave. The square wave has lots of harmonics and we use that to our advantage with a low pass filter. When the filter is open, it lets the harmonics growl. But as it shuts, it creates a warmer, round tone. This adds some tasteful complexity to our relatively simple bass line. We also have sidechain compression, which some folks call ducking. In a mix, the kick drum and bass sometimes occupy the same sonic space. By ducking the bass behind the kick, we reduce its volume and allow both of them to shine. Here are the modules we're going to use to make this bass. We've got the 8-step sequencer by Count Modula, two slews, a voltage-controlled oscillator, voltage-controlled filter, the presser, and crossfader by Bogue Audio, and the stock quantizer, envelope generator, voltage-controlled amplifier, and scope. The scope isn't necessary, but it's fun to see the sounds that we make. These three modules focus on pitch information, and these seven on sound design. Our pitches are sequenced utilizing an 8-step sequencer and quantizer. The 8-step feeds voltages to the quantizer, which restricts the values to particular note ranges, and then sends the modified value out to a slew limiter. The slew limiter then smooths out any abrupt changes, which gives the bass a portamento, or slide, between notes. We'll connect the control voltage output of the 8-step to the volt per octave input of the quantizer. Then we feed the output to the input of the slew limiter, and end at the VCO's volt per octave input. I also drop the VCO to the base register by lowering the frequency knob to negative 2 on the dial, or 65-ish hertz. I chose a divided by 4 clock to progress the 8 step. This moves the sequencer to the next step every 4 beats, meaning each of these steps represent one bar. I really love D minor, so I'm going to make a progression in that key. 6, 4, 5, 1 is the progression I chose, so I'm going to use the notes B flat, G, a, and D. To get those notes, I'll make sure the quantizer only has those notes highlighted. Now I'll manipulate the knobs on the 8 step until those notes are playing in the order that I want. Higher knob values create higher pitches. I also want the note to change every 2 bars. We can do that by changing the clock division, or by doubling up the knob values on back-to-back -back steps. I chose the latter. I'd like to encourage you to mess around with the notes and values a lot. This is a place where you can create many different feels through progressions. Here's how the note changes sound in mine. Now we have our sound design modules. This is where we'll add the modulation and blend the two voices into one. First, let's set up the audio cabling. I usually put audio cabling in red. Our square wave will firstly go to the input of the VCA, and then the output goes to our filter. Next, the filter output goes to our crossfader. Either input works because we're using this to mix the two waveforms. I'm going to choose A. Just like in the last video, we'll turn the shape knob here all the way right. That way both waveforms are at max volume when this knob is in the middle. Now, our triangle wave goes directly to the other port of the crossfader. In my case, that's B. The mix output from our crossfader goes to the input of the presser, and the output to our scope, and finally to the third channel of our mixer. The last sound we need is a duplicate of our kick drum output from the last video. If we hold control when we pull a cable, we can pull many from one port. The kick drum output goes into the sidechain input, and ducks the amplitude of our mixed bass signal. You're doing a great job so far, I'm proud of you. Good job. Let's take the control voltage output from the second channel of our 16-step sequencer and feed that into our second slew limiter. The output then goes to the control voltage port of our voltage-controlled filter. I'm turning up the attenuverter a bit. 
That's this one labeled CV here. Now turning these knobs affects the filter on each step. This is step specific filter control, and it rocks. We'll also bring the gate output from this sequencer and plug that into the gate input of our envelope generator like this. Now the envelope output goes to our voltage controlled amplifier. Every gate from this sequencer now initiates the envelope and we can manipulate it to get different vibes. That's all the cables, time to turn some knobs and click some buttons. I set the bass to trigger on eighth notes by clicking on every other step on the side listed G. Remember, from our last video, the side listed T is triggering our hi-hat, so try not to mess with that one, unless you want to of course. I drew back the attack to 7 milliseconds, the decay to 69 milliseconds, and the sustain and release at zero. This envelope only affects the square wave, which is the harsher of the two. It lets the square cut into the mix every eighth note, and the triangle holds the fatness of the tone. The filter is low pass by default, and that's exactly where we want it to be. There are lots of harmonics and square waves, and low pass filters let them come out as the filter opens. I increased the slope and resonance on the filter, this brightens the tone of our bass when the filters open. And I reduced the filter cutoff to about 500Hz. Now that the CV knob is turned up to about 40%, we can open it with our sequencer. I chose steps 6, 11, and 15. but choose whichever steps you like. For both slew limiters, I have the rise and fall at about one second. This makes the pitch and the openness of the filter slide to the next value instead of being abrupt. For the pitch slew, I chose exponential sliding, which drops or rises quickly and then slows down throughout the second. And for the filter, I chose linear, which rises and falls at the same rate for the whole duration. Next we have our ducking from the presser. I left the input gain and output gain at their default values. These would increase or decrease the volume of the sound if you like. If you push it to distortion, you can get some really nice gritty effects. I pushed the detector mix to 100% and put the attack and release both at zero. This makes our ducking fast and deep. Increasing the attack and release will ease into and out of the duck, which makes it more subtle. I also drop the threshold to the minimum and push the ratio to infinity. Again, this exaggerates the ducking. Both of these affect how much the amplitude of the bass is reduced, so values in the middle will be subtle. I want it to duck a lot so that the bass gets the hell out of the way when our kick comes. It'll keep the sound punchy even though the bass is so fat. Here's how it sounds without ducking. And here's how it sounds with ducking. Lastly, I turned the mix on our crossfader to favor the triangle wave a bit. It's my personal preference to limit some of the harsh tones of the square wave. I further embrace this in our EQ. I lowered the highs and mids a bit and added a smidge of reverb. And here it is with the kit that we made last time. You did a great job, and we utilized so many useful techniques that we can adapt for our future patches. If you like this kind of stuff, you can let me know that by liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All the content that I make, including my sample packs and the VCV Rack Cheat Sheet, are free forever for everyone, and you can find them on my Kofi page. I have several Kofi supporters that I'd like to shout out. Lungao showed support for the second time. Thank you so much, Lungao. I'm so glad that you like the content enough to show continued support. You rock, dude. Loaf is a new supporter who showed generous support. Thank you so much, Loaf. You rock. I believe Loaf makes content as well. Let us know where you post your work in the comments, dude. Joe Chim is also a new supporter. Thank you so much, Joe Chim. It really means so much to me that you showed support. Keep on rocking it. Huge shout out to my other supporters as well. Your names will always be on my webpage and on the dedication page of the VC Rank cheat sheet. I hope you all have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.